new Fenty Easy Drop Skin Tint. It looked so bad on me. This is really bad too. The liquid lipsticks from Pat McGrath, new Sol de Janeiro hair mask. Like what the heck is this? It makes my hair look terrible. I feel like I really need to tell you guys about these misses because I don't want you to waste your money on them. They made my skin and my face and my hair and everything just look bad. Luckily there's a couple gems in this video too. So let's get started. I wanna talk about the Tatcha Silk Powder, first of all. This is the newest release from Tatcha. I know a lot of you guys love the Tatcha products, so I figured I would pick this one up and review it. It's a loose powder. Love the packaging. It's definitely like Tatcha-esque for sure. But you can see here that the powder gets like very easily distributed. If you're not careful, it is a powder cloud. It comes out of a fairly large opening, so if you do tap against the inside of the product here, it will pop out fast. If you are a loose powder girl, that might be something that you don't mind doing. But when it comes to the actual product itself, it's fragrance free, which is not typical of Tatcha. So I do like that, but I didn't like how powdery it looked on my skin. I felt like I really had to do a light hand, a light application. It does take a little bit of a learning curve to really get that down because when you are taking this container here, tapping on the inside to try to get the powder out, it comes out like a powder storm, like I said, so you don't wanna waste any and it's just collecting in the container here, but then you find that you're putting too much on your skin and it looks too made up. This powder does have a nice sheeniness to it. However, if you're able to get the perfect amount on your skin, it does look great. It's just once you overdo it, it will start to collect in your lines, especially underneath the eyes or any dimpling that you have. It also has a slight yellow undertone. So if you do want something that doesn't have an undertone at all, this might not be for you either. Now the next powder that I tried blows this one out of the water and this is the new Dior powder. This you guys is brilliant. It is so beautiful, so airbrushed. The shade that I picked up is 2N, which is too neutral. It is beautiful, you guys. Now, the embossment of the Dior kind of logoing that is in the powder is going to fade away, but this is something that it's pressed, so it's a lot easier to use. You do have that really beautiful, even distribution on your brush, and when you apply it to the skin, it looks effortless. It sets your makeup all day, doesn't collect in lines. If you wanna add a little bit more, you can. If you wanna keep it minimal, you can. So yes, it's a luxury price point. The packaging, given that it's Dior, in my opinion, could have been a little bit more luxe. That's just me being crazy, you know, picky. But this is beautiful nonetheless, and if you want a new powder, especially coming up in the VIP, B sale, this is the one for you. The last powder that I tried is the new one from Kosa's. This is their airbrush powder as well. It's called the Cloud Set, and the shade that I picked up is Breezy. This is also a pressed powder, just like the Dior one, so ease of use is definitely 10 out of 10. It's also a baked powder, so if you're into those types of formulations, this could be your best friend. But, and here's the big but about this one, even though it's a pressed powder and the tone of this one doesn't have any undertone in my opinion, it's actually fairly neutral. What I find is that it does gather into lines a bit and it is on the drying side. It really just is a solid okay product in my opinion and because of this, this isn't going to be a repurchase. Is this something I'm gonna use up? Yes, but after that, I don't feel a need to buy it again. It's not something that I would recommend you buy either because the Dior one, is just so much better. So from the worst one, I actually would say the Kosa's because it is so drying on the skin. The second is Tatcha, and only because once you get that handle right with the perfect amount of powder, it actually does look nice, but it does take practice. But the one that pulls everything out of the water is the Dior. So 100% the one I'd recommend out of the three. I wanna talk about this hair mask that I picked up quite a little while ago now because I wanted to thoroughly test it. It took me a few tries to gather my thoughts and this is definitely a miss. Now this is the new one from Sol de Janeiro. It is the hair treatment. This is very, very similar packaging, like basically identical to the body butter. I wouldn't mix those up because if you put the body butter in your hair, <laughs> I don't know what would happen. The formulation of this is so thick that it almost is like they took their body butter recipe and put it in here and marketed it as a hair product. It is so, so thick, very paste-like. 
It makes your hair greasy a lot faster in my opinion, and no matter how little I use, I still find that problem. It's something that, you know, I've been working on to get rid of, really. I don't wanna waste my money. The scent is really nice. Of course, it's very fragrant, very beachy. Definitely has that nice exact scent as the body butter if you're a fan, but in the hair, it's too much. My hair is thick and long, and even for my thick, long hair, it is very, very heavy, weighs it right down. I would just stick to the body butter and keep it to the body. I even wanna try this applying to my body and see what happens, because I feel like it's gotta be the same thing. Like, are they passing the body butter as a hair treatment? <laughs> but never would I recommend this as a hair mask, way too heavy. I feel like if you have fine hair or less hair than I do, or shorter hair, it's going to look really, really bad. I don't wanna dump on you too much with negativity, so let's go to a positive. <laughs> let's talk about a concealer that is not brand new to the market, but one that I did pick up recently that I love. It's the Pat McGrath Sublime Concealer. This is one that I think you can put underneath the eyes beautifully to cover acne beautifully. If you wanna cover redness beautifully, this does a great job as being a multi-purpose, multi-functional product. If you wanna put it under the eye, I do find that setting it does keep it really locked in, although you don't have to set it. But I personally think setting it is just the best way to use it. It just doesn't budge. I do have some minor like lines now because I'm very expressive and I'm 31. And I do find that sometimes things can gather right in here, but this concealer really does a good job of not doing that. So I love that. And I also love that I can use the same product to cover any acne breakouts. This is a 10 out of 10. If you're looking for a new concealer, this is great. Pat McGrath has an awesome foundation as well, but I would stay away from the setting powder and the primer. I really found them to be mediocre and way too expensive. Speaking of Pat McGrath, this is the last time I'm gonna mention these because I've mentioned these a few times now. Liquid lipsticks, these are the Liquilusts. No, I don't like them, my lips don't like them, and I look bad with them on. <laughs> it's like, if you happen to have like perfect lips, perhaps this would work for you, and I'm very jealous if that's the case. But I have lips that have lines, sometimes I have dryness. This will accentuate them, like, so much, it's crazy. I just can't. So they're very expensive too. They're liquid lipsticks. I'm also not a liquid lipstick fan, so it's probably why these didn't work out for me. I don't know, I picked up two shades like a dum-dum. I picked up Divine Nude and Divine Rose. The only thing that works for them is their shades are really beautiful, but that's about it. It's a very thin consistency as well. I did have a tip from one of you guys that said that you just have to put like a lip balm in between, but to be honest with you, it moves so, so easily that way. So that was something that didn't work out for me, unfortunately, but could be a good tip if you made a mistake like me and picked these up and now you just want to find a way to make them work. So many misses in this video. <laughs> the next one is the Rare Beauty Stay Vulnerable Blush. It's funny that it's rare beauty because it is rare to look beautiful with this blush on. That's so cheesy, but true. This is not something I'd recommend. I would recommend her other blush way, way better than this one. This is the one in Nearly Neutral. It is a really thin cream consistency. And what I find is that it buffs the foundation right off underneath my skin. It also blends into nothing, so you almost have to lightly tap it in the skin. And then if you do like one tap too much, it's gone. Like all of a sudden I'm like, hello, like where did my blush go? <laughs> Picks up the product underneath, even if you did set your base, this guy will find a way to erase it. It's like a magic eraser, but in blush form. And this also, if you're able to get that perfect, perfect bit of like putting it on the skin, blending it so it's there but not gone, it'll disappear on you in an hour. Gone like the wind, really. If you guys are too young to know what that is, it is a movie, just like this blush, named after the blush, I think. <laughs> The battle of the base products. Let's get into them. As you guys know, I tried this Milk Skin Tint. This is such a beautiful product, but that's it. There are quite a few duds to make this not worth buying. I will tell you why. Number one, hugely expensive for 16 milliliters of product. That is nothing. This is only half the fluid ounce, so this is very expensive for half the typical amount of product that you're getting. Number two, the packaging. So a lot of you guys told me that this was once on the market before and it was repackaged to this. If you have any like wrist problems, any weakness, any issues, pain, that kind of thing, 
it's gonna be kind of hard to do this. It's not the easiest method to disperse the product. I also find the rolly ball, although good in theory, it does tend to get kind of globbed up. It won't turn sometimes, it will get stuck with product. Then you kind of have to like get in there with a Q-tip and clean around so that it can actually move again. I do find that this is going to malfunction before I finish it, which sucks. That's like my biggest guess is that it's already so hit and miss when it comes to applying it flawlessly that I haven't even gotten through it and I feel like it's going to break down on me. It's expensive for what it is. The thing is though, it does look really beautiful on the skin. It's a really nice light coverage, slightly buildable, but not to a medium, but it's just like that nice tint. So I do like the formula, but I just want this to be put in a bottle and then double the amount and charge the same price. <laughs> So with all of that in mind, there's better tints out there, like the Urban Decay Hydromaniac, which I love, or the Tarte Maracuja Tinted Hydrator. This is the foundation that I have been loving, you guys. I'm very, very excited. This is a new brand for me. It is the Liss Triple Fix Serum Foundation. This looks beautiful. Love this on the skin. I think it's a beautiful medium coverage that has that really nice natural glow finish. Nothing too radiant, nothing too matte. It's beautiful, like it's great. This is literally my ideal. Anything that's super, super matte, you guys know I stay away from, but anything too shiny either is also not my favorite. It's just that perfect, like your skin is nourished, glowy, right after a facial. Love this. I think LYS stands for love yourself, if I'm not mistaken, which is like the best positive messaging right now. I love that. And the shade that I have is MN1. Because of the skincare ingredients in this, it is a serum foundation, so it does benefit your skin also. You do have to shake it before you use it, but if you have a match to this one, it's going to be amazing for you. If you have tastes like me, that is, like if you love that glow, if you love medium buildable coverage, this is gonna look lovely. The one that I wish that worked out Fenty Beauty Easy Drop. This is one that so many people are loving right now. So I like, it pains me to say that this one like sucked so bad for me, but it actually did. It was one of the worst letdowns of the year so far, in my opinion. This does sort of remind me a little bit of her first foundation that she came out. Like obviously the coverage isn't the same, but it's like the pro matte one that also didn't do well for me. So if you love that first one, you might actually like this one, not sure, but this one clung to my skin. My skin is normal, so I wouldn't even say it's dry, but it made it look like I had dry patches everywhere. Clung and emphasized, emphasized my lines, emphasized anything that was just imperfect, whether there was a little bit of texture, something. It was like, this is basically a highlight to highlight all of the crap that is wrong on your face. <laughs> So that's kind of my experience with it. I know a lot of people love it. So obviously if you are one of those people that love it, then great, I'm glad it worked out for you. But this is one that also, I mean, it's a very, very light coverage. So we are talking about a tint, but the effect on the skin, I would almost rather not wear anything. It just made everything look worse. If you have dry skin, I would really, really be careful with this one. Maybe mix it with a moisturizer, but then why bother, right? There's better tints out there, like the Urban Decay, like I said, or the Tarte one. Such a disappointment because it's such a cute packaging style. I like the idea of a skin tint, especially coming into spring and summer. Maybe if you're oily, you would have a better chance at liking this. Let me know your thoughts on all of these products. I hope it was helpful for you when purchasing your next products from Sephora. And until my next one, guys, take care and stay safe. Bye, guys.